we're going to be successful in passing state laws, uh, city resolutions, or ultimately changing federal law, we're going to have to grow the size of our movement. And coalition building is one of the most tested ways to do that. I think the key to successful coalition building is to really consider who you are as a person. When you think about all the things that you are, you'll find that you're a family member, you're a student or an ex-student, you're a member of a religion and a political party, um, you perhaps a member of an occupation, and, a, uh, and you have hobbies and interests. Well, all of these, all of these activities have, are associated with other people who are potential allies for you. Moreover, it's easy for you to ask for their support because you're one of them. It doesn't take money, it just takes determination, uh, a little bit of training, and a real conviction. Uh, and if you bring this, uh, your conviction and your passion to uh, your coalition building, you're sure to be successful. Hey there folks, my name is Matt Allen, I'm with the Massachusetts Patient Advocacy Alliance, and I'm here today to talk to you about gathering endorsements for your medical marijuana campaign. When we formed Mass Patient Advocacy Alliance, we realized from the beginning that we need to really legitimize this campaign as a public health issue. And a good way to do that is by gathering endorsements from public health organizations and other supporters. Like so many areas of advocacy, the most important part of the process of gathering endorsements is first doing research. You want to spend a lot of time on the computer, on the internet, researching your community, all the organizations out there, all the organizations around the state, and trying to figure out who are potential supporters. There's going to be some natural targets that you might look at first. Groups that offer direct services to folks with HIV or folks with chronic pain or folks with cancer. Another good place to start is by looking at organizations that endorse medical marijuana on the national level. There's a lot of groups like the Leukemia and Lymphoma Society that have uh, national organizations that have endorsed medical marijuana in the past, but also have local affiliates that are chapters on the state level. With the formal coalition building, it's when you ask a, a group if they would sign a resolution or a statement in support of medical marijuana. For example, in 2002, I asked the New Jersey State Nurses Association if they would not endorse medical marijuana by signing on to a resolution in support of medical marijuana. Uh, after some discussion and uh, a vote at the Atlantic City Convention, the Nurses Association did in fact uh, endorse medical marijuana. And then uh, after that, the American Nurses Association endorsed medical marijuana. Before you start even asking for endorsements, you do want to make sure you're prepared in other ways. So you already have your PR materials, including your bill summary, uh, a handout that explains why medical marijuana reform is important to your community. You want to have the text of the whole legislation you're trying to support. Or if you're not trying to pass a statewide law, as we are in Massachusetts, but working on implementation issues or something at the city level, you want to be very clear what it is you're trying to achieve. Frankly, to get a significant amount of endorsements, you're going to have to cast a wide net. And if you've ever been in sales, you know that you have to make that request many times before you're going to actually close the deal and make a sale. In order to get the uh, list of endorsements that's here behind me, which uh, includes some very significant public health groups in Massachusetts, but at the same time, uh, just about 10 to 15 groups on there, we actually had to do outreach to over 100 organizations asking for meetings and asking for them to sign on. You want to start with those low-hanging fruits. They might be, as I mentioned earlier, some of those local affiliates of national organizations to support medical marijuana reform. But you might already be aware of some supporters on the local level. In Massachusetts, we were able to look at who had testified at public hearings in the past and already supported medical marijuana reform. And that included, in our case, the ACLU and the AIDS Action Committee. So as a first step, what we did is get those groups on board on the record in support of our campaign and then as we do outreach to other groups the first thing we're able to mention is hey we're forming this coalition we're looking for endorsements of safe access to medical marijuana in massachusetts the aclu and the aids action committee have endorsed us and already you're going to have some legitimacy in the eyes of the person that you're asking for the endorsement from a crucial part of getting endorsements from other organizations is making the process as easy as possible for them so you want to keep your conversation short. When you give the organization a call, um, you want to be very concise and professional. And in the case that they do want to support you, you want to send the, email them on over a pre-written letter. I mean, it's great if they want to write their own letter. 
But honestly, I've had a lot of groups that are big supporters and they say, you know what, I'll put something together. But, but frankly, they just don't have time. We go out to community events and we ask people to sign statements in support of medical marijuana and, and give us their email address so that we can keep them up to date with what's going on. We hold uh, press conferences, we hold demonstrations, we hold uh, uh, any number of e e events uh, that are solely designed uh, to uh, inform the public about medical marijuana. We publish op-eds, we publish letters, letters to the editor, we publish blogs, we're on Facebook and Twitter, uh, and we try to keep their, our issue in the public eye uh, to increase the informal coalition building. The first request I make before even asking for an endorsement is, hey, is it possible to come out to your office and meet you for 10 or 15 minutes to let you know a little bit about what we're up to? Um, certainly, when there are objections, questions, or concerns, it could be more effective to make that first phone call, have a meeting scheduled later on, send them over some supporting materials, and that way when you you actually sit down to have the conversation, uh, the target will have had some chance to think about what concerns might come up from their membership and you're able to address them. A lot of organizations, specifically more prestigious uh, organizations, organizations that have been involved in advocacy long term, have their own internal approval process that they have to go through through before they can endorse any campaigns. So you want to do your research and make sure you're aware of what that process might be. Or that are more respected in the field of public health or whatever field they're involved in, like for instance in our case the Mass Nurses Association or the Bar Association, it can be most effective to initiate contact with those groups uh, by someone who's already a member or someone who's already in the field. One good tactic is to have information packets for different groups, so you can tailor your one-page summary of the issue uh, to different groups depending on who you're trying to do outreach to. If it's a group that works on cancer issues, you might include different information than if it is a group that is focused on increasing public safety in their community. So it's definitely effective to tailor your handouts so that you have different one-page summaries for different groups. When we've done outreach to a lot of endorsement organizations, one of the responses that comes up, especially among groups that do advocacy and offer direct services in their community, but also support medical marijuana reform, is that they say, well, you know, we support you guys, we're going to sign this letter, but frankly, we're tied up with all our other uh, priorities and we're not going to do anything beyond that. Well, that's fantastic. Thank you so much for signing a letter in support of our campaign. But you want to keep building that relationship, hoping that that organization will increase their advocacy in the future. So while they may be hesitant at first to offer some support to your campaign, it doesn't hurt to make the ask, well, I understand that you have your other priorities, but would it be possible for you to send out an email to your membership mentioning that we're working on this and directing people to our website? Or putting my email on there so folks who might be interested can contact us. And usually I get a positive response for that. But in the long term, there's some other asks that you can make, especially to a group who seems very enthusiastic about supporting your campaign. Well, thanks for the endorsement. When we do a press conference six or eight months from now, do you think it would be possible for you to send over an individual from your organization to represent your support? You know, that's the kind of uh, commitment. It's very small. It's just going to take a few hours, but can make a big difference in the way that your organization is perceived in the press. The main thing that you want to keep in mind is to go through this process uh, in a strategic manner that first of all includes doing all your research, getting those low-hanging fruits on board, and most importantly, being polite and professional in your outreach. Because, as I mentioned, gathering endorsements should be looked at in the context of your larger or your overall organizing efforts. So even in the case that you aren't able to get some groups on board, just by being level-headed and professional in your outreach, you're going to do a lot for improving the perception of the medical marijuana issue in general. Certainly don't hesitate to contact us at Mass Patient Advocacy Alliance if you have any questions about gathering endorsements or if you'd like any advice. It's a pretty straightforward process. It can be a lot of fun, so good luck.